The human genome is, is quite complicated. Uh, it's three billion letters long. Now imagine the genome is a Word document. To fix a specific typo, you will take the cursor to where that typo is, and then you delete or type in the new sequence. So how do you actually do this in the nucleus of a living cell? My name is Feng Zhang, and I am a molecular biologist. I was born in Shijiazhuang, Hebei province, China. I grew up in a period in China when there was enormous emphasis on science and technology. It was uh, the early 1980s when China just uh, opened up, and um, everywhere people were excited about uh, trying to do things that innovate and try to make China a stronger country. I immigrated with my parents from China to Des Moines, Iowa when I was 11. It was a fantastic experience. People really welcomed us with open arms. Both my parents work in the science and engineering field, and growing up um, and uh, talking with uh, them about science, uh, that always kept me very excited. I entered Carl Dyserath's lab as a graduate student while I was at Stanford, and we worked on developing optogenetics, a methodology for controlling brain cells using light. We can make a specific group of cells in the brain sensitive to light using genetic engineering and so when you shine light on that piece of brain region, you, you are not stimulating all of the cells, only the ones that you engineered. And that is making uh, the study of brain circuits and, uh, and how the brain works a lot uh, easier. I started my lab at the Broad Institute in January 2011. My lab works on gene editing. Genome editing is a way to go into the DNA of our cells and be able to make a precise change. I began with a system called the TAIL system, but it has some challenges for ease of use and, and ability to scale. In fact, if we want to study hundreds or thousands of genes, uh, it's pretty challenging. And that drove me to look for alternative systems. I had heard about CRISPR, and I thought, wow, this is a really exciting system. Um, maybe we can harness it. A paper that we published in the beginning of 2013 described how you can use uh, the CRISPR system for DNA gene editing. CRISPR uses a short RNA sequence to be able to find uh, the address in, in the genome. So the simplicity of being able to synthesize the RNA makes genetic engineering a lot easier. Uh, that paper uh, has received a lot of attention, and people have uh, taken what's reported uh, to use in their own experiments. Scientists are using it to be able to study genetic mutations. Researchers are also working very actively to develop uh, therapeutics based on the technology. For example, mutations that cause sickle cell disease or cause hemophilia. There are also applications in agriculture. Uh, engineering crops so that they become drought resistant or virus resistant can dramatically increase agricultural yield and, and feed the world. We're trying to uh, engage the community to make our tools easy to use and, and get it out there and help as many people as we can. One of the really exciting things about gene editing has been how it has opened up people's imagination about what we can do uh, with biology. Uh, being able to directly edit uh, the DNA letters in the genome uh, gave us the ability and the potential to be able to engineer biological systems to make it useful for a variety of different applications. And, and who knows, some of those discoveries may lead to new cures for, for many diseases.